versus knitting. Hi everybody, and welcome to Man vs. Knitting. This is a channel devoted to inspiring men to knit, as well as to give knitters information to become better in their craft. So I hope you enjoy it. If you have any questions or you have ideas or suggestions, or you just want to get in contact with me, I invite you to visit www.manversusknitting.com. Here you can uh, get details on show note. People email me questions. I put the answers there. There's a blog that I update every occasionally. And um, I also invite you to fill up the contact form. And uh, that form you can get to me or I believe the email address is there as well. All right, so let's get to our first section. Uh, as we begin every episode, we begin it with history. This uh, first episode of his story or his story uh, is going to be uh, on a very good friend of mine. His name is Eric Lucius. And the reason why I wanted to bring him to you is because he embodies the idea I have for just the regular guy, a regular guy who found knitting and likes it as a hobby. Um, uh, he does a lot of things and I would like him to tell it in his words. So let's meet Eric Lucius. Well, we have a very special episode today and I want to thank you for tuning in to Man vs. Knitting. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Eric Lucius. Hey. How y'all doing? And uh, I brought Eric here because I wanted him to meet you and I wanted you to meet him because he's done some really great stuff uh, over the years and I wanted him to share some of that with you. Um, part of what I say over the years, because we've known each other, we just figured it out, probably right around 13, 14 years? 13, 14. Somewhere in there. there. Um, Eric was actually part of the very first men's knitting group in Houston, Texas. Um, it was us and a bunch of others, but we were the consistent ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were always there. We were always there. Um, and so, and Eric is also now part of the new one, that Fiberman group that I told you guys about. Um, so we are now started our a second group in Houston to try to get more guys to knit. So it's been kind of fun uh, in that way. But part of what, uh, like I said, I wanted you to get to know him. So Eric, I know you, but if you could tell everybody kind of what it is you do and who you are. All right, well, um... I've been knitting, and I actually had to figure this out on the way over here, um, <laughs> a little over 30 years, and, you know, for, I guess for a while I was known as the, the lace, the lace knitter. I think when we met, uh -huh. I was on a lace You were on kick, a lace kick, yeah. And I, you know, and I was searching through my stash to see what I had, and I could come to find out I've only got like one piece of lace <laughs> that I haven't given away, so... So at least we have one piece to show one you piece. today. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I started knitting um, in the late 80s. and Before knitting was cool. Way before knitting was cool. <laughs> way before. Pretty much self-taught. And, you know, as soon as I got into it, it was, it was I realized how much, how much engineering and math there was in the actual act of designing a piece and making it come together you know on the needles and it just it completely blew me away and I've knit nearly daily you know for these past 30 years that's awesome yeah. so. I didn't know it was that long yeah he's got me to be by <laughs> 10 years but I was very late to the games so. I, I say 30 you know, I, I tell my kids all the time, it's just the other day, and they're like, hey, Dad, that was 10 years ago, right? So, no, but, uh, but I, I, I want to say it was like in 1989, yeah. I, I think. That's 30 years, right? Yeah. Okay. Mine was 1999. <laughs> so, again, yeah, so that's 10 right. Years, yep, 10 years. Perfect. Um, which is why I can say I've been knitting for 20 years, because I know exactly when it was. But, uh, yeah, that's awesome. So, and he, you don't just knit though. You've also, you're a big spinner. Yeah, I spin. Um, Which means he creates the yarn. He makes the yarn. Yeah, and and just recently uh, started doing a little bit of crochet. But 
you know, it was kind of one of those things where um, when grandma's gone, who's going to make the kids crocheted blankets when nobody else in the family knows how to do it? So I felt like <laughs> I had to take that burden on and learn how to crochet. So, oh, that's funny. You know, somebody's got to do it. Yeah, so see, it had nothing to do with Drew, who you met earlier, the crochet dude. Um. <laughs> no, I started crocheting before I met Drew. I knew who he was, but before I met him, yeah. That's it. That's hilarious. Okay, so um, you spin the yarn, you knit the yarn up, and so if we added all that time up, which do you think you do commit more time? Do you commit more time to the spinning or the knitting, or has it come in phases? You know, it goes in phases. I've been on a major project kick lately where I've just been knitting. I've been knitting sweaters and cardigans and, you know, big, giant shawls. Um, and we live in Houston. Just remember that. <laughs> yes, but I've got a girlfriend that stays cold, so... A shawl right. is always handy. Yes, that's true. A shawl true. is always handy. At the movies, at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, I have a shawl here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, there it goes in phases, definitely. So there's times when I do nothing but spin, and I'll spin, and I won't have any use for that yarn other than the act of spinning and making the yarn. Right, so. But the... It eventually gets used, yeah, but say. it doesn't always... Because I've never known you to be someone who creates something that you didn't further with it, go further with it. No, but sometimes sometimes just the art of making the yarn is, is enough. Have you ever sold your yarn? Never. I never asked you that, I don't think. Never. Okay. I've never sold a knitted piece, and I've given away... A lot of dollars worth of yarn. <laughs> we won't even go into actual values there. <laughs> That's why, though, knitting is great gift giving. I mean, it's a it's a wonderful way to create something handmade for somebody. And you, I don't think there's a lot of other things to do a guy can do to do that. I mean, you can make a box if you're a wood person. You could make a hat rack if you're a welder. Um, you know, but knitting really gives you something that you can give to somebody else and they can, makes them warm, it keeps them secure. Well, so speaking of knitting gift giving, there are folks in my past that have been removed from the knitting gift list. <laughs> you know, a hand knitted gift is not for everybody. No. Um, you know, some people are knit abusers and they get marked off the list, so. <laughs> yes, I made a, a really cool Mobius cowl for a family member who will go unnamed. And, <clears throat> of course, if you watch this, you'll know who you are. And uh, I went over to that person's house, and they said something, and I looked on the floor, and there it was, brought, wadded up in a corner with a bunch of other laundry. And I was like, that's not how you treat a hand-knit piece. So I took that person off the list and then no longer <laughs> get handed gifts from Charles. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. So, yeah, make sure that you're very discerning. Um, but when, you know, the other the other thing is is you gift somebody some, something that, you know, they appreciate so much that they don't want to use it. And that's almost as bad uh, as abusing the nits. Um, that's true. You know, if I make something for somebody, mm -hmm. I want it to be worn out. And then I'll make another one. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, it's, a, it's a great hobby. It's something that's, you know, so much fun to do. Yeah. Okay, so I wanted to show you guys a little bit about what he's done. Um, but we kind of talked about the lace that you did before. And I want to show that. But I wanted you to tell a story about where he's knitted in the past oh. <laughs> uh, and you still do it though don't you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. okay so you're gonna love this one so I, I knit everywhere I work at um, a fairly large engineering firm in the Gulf Coast area and I knit at lunch I knit at work I knit 
outside, I knit in public, I knit in the deer stand. I get a lot of good knitting done in the deer stand. And and I think that's what he was focusing on. Yes, because I'll never forget, <laughs> it was at that first uh, meeting that we had, or that was first uh, time, and uh, that yarn shop, and I remember he tells us, oh yeah, I knit while I'm hunting. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, I knit in the deer blind. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. It was just, it was the funniest story. And to think that somebody like him can take something that obviously, I mean, you're waiting there for hours with nothing to do. He can sit there and be productive in that time. That's amazing to me. Well, I swap between, you know, reading a book and, and knitting. But, okay. But it's, it's usually about 50-50 <laughs> as I'm sitting out there. I get a lot of work done. So this, this right here, this was almost exclusively done, you know, at the deer camp. And it's a zip-up vest that, uh, that was knit in the deer stand. Look at that. <laughs> now, I wouldn't around, obviously you did it there, so I didn't see. Um, did you steak it or did you knit? Oh, forth? no, no, this was, this was steak. Oh, yeah? This was steak. This pattern was amazing in that, so if you looked. How was the, I double knit The there? collar is double knit and then stitched back down so it's nice and finished. And even on the inside of it, um, there's a placket knit and then hand sewn in over the zipper to where it's extremely finished. Yeah, that really is. Yeah. So, huh. I mean, it's the details on the pattern. Well, and you did this one recently. Amazing. Yes. Yeah. I so did. what I'll do is I'll put the pattern in the show notes so that you guys have that as well. Um, because you can see the finished object here and maybe you want to knit it. Uh, maybe not in a deer stand. Maybe so. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, as long as you're knitting, that's all we care about. All right, so where do we want to go next? Okay. So, um, all right. And so we talk about the deer stand, but let's see some lace now. So oh, yes. Is, yes, yes, yes. So as I was saying, you know, I only found one piece of lace in the house that I haven't given away. Um, almost all of my knitting is given away. I probably do three projects for other people for every one project I do for myself. <laughs> but this is a piece of hand spun lace that I made for my daughter years and years ago when she was tiny. So it's a That's tiny it's little a shawl. shawl. Yes. But, but that was But the fact that it's hand spun. Look at the look at the consistency in that. And when I say spun hand spun, because you don't do you own a wheel? Yes, I do. This was done on a drop spindle. Right? Okay. Yeah, because most of the um, spinning I've seen him do is drop spindle, which takes a lot more patience, I think. And It's more portable, though. But it's, it's a lot more portable. Extremely yeah. portable, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's great. Yeah. That's great. So... Um, when we've talked about, we showed you one sweater. Um, let's talk about some of the some of the other sweaters that you've done. Um, what's so we'll stick with the probably one of the oldest ones that I have, that are, that I still have, and it's also hand spun. And this was all done on a drop spindle also, and uh, this was uh, a naturally, you know, dark brown black sheep breed specific it's a Cotswold and um, I spun I didn't really know what I was doing it's the very first attempt at a project with exclusively hand spun so I spun up three pounds of Cotswold oh gosh. on a on a drop spindle and then knit this this ended up using about I don't know that's about two pounds yeah yeah, so it's maybe a little over, maybe a little over, maybe a pound and three quarter. But this is a traditional Gansey pattern, so nothing but knits and pearls. 
with very traditional construction, meaning that it's it's semi cropped. It doesn't have a ribbed um, hem, so the hem is seed stitched. Well, there's not a lot of shaping, right? And there's no well, there is shaping in that. Well, in um, the sleeve. So you can actually get a lot of range of motion without it moving down. It has the traditional underarm gussets in it. So it's a diamond shape that allows you to raise your arms up over your head yeah. without the sleeve sliding down your arm. It gives you quite a bit of range of motion. And this was all knit in the round one piece. There's no seaming at all in it. That's awesome. That's it. And this sweater let's, is... Let's uh, hold it up. It's, you're gonna, every it's hard to of, see the detail. Yeah. But if we hold it at a little bit of an okay. angle... It's every bit of 20 years old. You can old, see a little bit of it. And it still gets worn a lot. It's a good... <laughs> I mean, it's soft, but yet it's hardy. It's a good... You can tell that the, the yarn really is a good work yarn. Like, it's a sweater that you want to do stuff in. You don't want to just sit around and, and stay warm. You want yeah, it to be... Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a very good job on that one. Well, thank you. And so another sweater that you've made uh and this one's recently yeah yeah both of both of the next two that we're gonna see are recent um you know if any of y'all follow the current trends um you know the the um what do we call that cow um not cow uh gansy no 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 no, no, no. That this so it's a, a Norwegian yeah Norwegian style sweater but there's yeah. a, there's a name for this and I completely dropped out of my brain. Um, <sighs> Maybe pull out a book. <laughs> right. But but it's you know it's it's a thing now right to have uh, to have the design in in the shoulder area and worked in the round. Uh, yeah. And this is actually a fairly traditional Norwegian pattern. Isn't that beautiful? That I just recently did. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, yeah just That's from the color nice. choice. It's very boy. <laughs> Which I like. It is. I, I, I'll have to tell you the name of the pattern after I look it up. Okay. And this one is, uh, you know, along a similar vein... In a more uh, a yarn weighted more for the Houston area. Right? Oh yeah. So this one was ex that first one was extremely bulky, and yeah. this is a worsted weight with um, some fairly simple colors. Yeah, it's lighter. It's very quick to knit, but a really comfy, stretchy collar. Yeah, it's a two, and again, it's a yeah. tubular collar. So. Yeah. Instead That's of just nice. being ribbed, it, you know, it folds back around and stitches That's down. That's super nice. Makes it much more comfortable to wear, yeah. too. Yeah. Nice. So, say we do knit sweaters in Houston, even though it's hot. But the thing is, you wear, I wear them. I wear them all the time. But I spend, you know, quite a bit of time outside. And so, But, no. So, I'll take this hand-knit sweater, and I'll wear it out in the woods. I'll wear it when I'm hunting. I'll wear it when I'm just wandering around, um, and I don't I don't worry about messing it up. Right, I'll make another. One. It was <laughs> it was knit, you know, just like a tool. It's made to be worn, and that's yeah. what I want people to do with things when I give give them to them. Um, so the fact that I knit almost every day means I knit usually a major project that stays at the house and a small project that travels around with me to work at lunchtime, you know, sitting in the car rider pickup line, you know, things like that. So See, I'm not the only one. <laughs> and I don't knit while I'm stuck in traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I knit when I'm parked. So these gloves, I've actually had these for several years. And I, I just I just love them. It's just sock yarn, a simple straight pattern. Um, Those are fun. They're fun. And again, these get worn. They get used all the time. 
and it's it's a quick portable project yeah because a lot of times for a new knitter you hear the term sock yarn you think it can only be used for socks but in actuality you can use that sock yarn for almost anything so and and all the the hand dyes you know the independent dyers i really like working with that yarn but you don't always see it in a project where you can see you know how it's you see the actual effects of the hand dye uh -huh. so this is a nice hand dye it came from somebody local in houston oh, yeah. um, awful with names but but this is just a simple tube right if we it, find out we'll let you know yeah simple tube you can actually see how the pooling works you can see the dye and anybody can knit a circle over and over and over again and um it turns into a nice little neck wall. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, again, you know, I can wear this anywhere, even even on a coolish day in Houston, right? If I'm going to be outside, right? So again, sock yarn can be used for anything, yeah. and a lot of different uses. Now the neat thing is you can transform yarn too. So uh, yarn with a lot of what's wool, you have acrylic yarn, you have other different types. We've talked about a couple of other types. Um, but if we show the next one, oh. um, which would be a, a fun <laughs> foray going back circle into a story. But these are some felted mittens that he made. There we go. Yeah, these, these were knit probably about four times this size and then I threw them in a pillowcase stuck them in the washing machine and uh, let it run a wash cycle with no soap until they shrunk down to fit and I made these specifically to wear in the deer stand because I have trigger fingers ding 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 <laughs> but that's a that's really clever, and that's going to be for a very cold morning. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, if it's raining and the wind's blowing forty miles an hour, forty degrees gets pretty pretty cold pretty quick. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, when there's no yeah, because those are deer stands, they're not very well insulated. No, I typically <laughs> I typically hunt out of a tent blind. Oh, okay. So it's just you know it's just a little bit of nylon with a screen mesh window and that's it um i like them because they're a lot easier to move around than the wooden blinds that we used to make when i was a kid <coughs> that's true excuse me um so another thing i do that's a portable project is hats i absolutely love knitting hats and i love wearing hats i wear hats a lot a lot <laughs> right i wear ball caps i wear knitted hats and there's a couple of patterns. I was surprised when he came over today that he wasn't wearing a hat. Well, I knew I was going to be on the video, and I didn't know how the <laughs> shadow was going to work, right? So, so there's a couple of patterns that I just go back to over and over because they're super fun to knit. Um, this is. And I remember when you made that hat. This is or one or at least one one of a hat like this that. This is the original. Is it from Twisted Yarns? Yeah. In what year was that? Gosh, 2006. <laughs> Possibly, possibly, and this thing gets the snot worn out of it, and it has held up perfectly well. I've probably knit twenty of these in this exact pattern, in different colors. So this is the original one. I've knit this hat up to here. What what happened? And I stopped. It's one of my whips. <laughs> it's one of, but I'm gonna finish it. That's what I'm doing. It's my it's commitment wonderful. is to finish all my whips. So I have, I have kind of a hall tree right at the front door, and it has these two little slots at the top. One of them is filled with hats. I, you know, it's probably you know, 18, 20 inches wide and seven, eight inches tall, and it's just packed with hats. And it's probably six or seven of this pattern in different colors. So just so everybody <laughs> believes me, right? So there it is in. Oh yeah, um, indigo and steel gray. You know, same pattern. 
it just works almost any color combination you do. The first one was three colors, this one's two colors. Um, and I've done it with, I like the tassel, so I do the braid on every single one of them. But uh, yeah, I just, I love that pattern. The other pattern that I <clears throat> really like is, um, and this is an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern. Ah. Right. That's the second time she's been mentioned it's, today. It's a, uh, what is it? It's a really, really, really warm hat or something like okay. that. But the interesting thing is, is it's just a simple hat, right? So it's just knit straight. But you end up with like this much space that you can do anything you want with. But what makes it special is, it's a hat knit inside of a hat. So you've got double the amount of space to do some color work with or do some pattern work or designs. Yeah. And um, that's really cool. It's it's a perfect hat for me that likes to wear hats. And um, it it's not bulky. It fits, you know, snug to my head. Because I'm, I, I think, my daughter told me I'm not, but I really think I'm a little too old to go for the slouchy hat thing. But. You know, you never know. I, like I love slouchy hat. hats. I love slouchy hats. <laughs> really? Okay, here you go. So there's, there's a slouchy hat that I, <laughs> and I did. And I like this pattern. I knit yeah, it. Pretty. I wasn't sure about the whole slouchy hat thing. But I just, I love the colors and the pattern. I don't think you can be too old to wear a slouchy hat. Especially mm -hmm. if you hand knit it. I don't know about that. If you hand knit it, mm -hmm. by God. So see, we could, I could actually put it on with the slouch and then people could vote. Yeah, tell us what you think. <laughs> see, you do the slouch. Is it slouch you I did love that. Yeah. yeah. See, see, I love that effect. See. <laughs> I love that effect. It looks good on you. It's fine. I, yeah, it's comfortable. Yeah. Right? So did you feel this? It's um, al baby alpaca. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's dreamy. It is. I mean, it's wonderful yarn. <gasps> That's really special. Of course, I had to order it from the UK because it came out of a UK knitting magazine. The pattern super soft, and um, you know I paid way too much in shipping, but it's it's wonderful yarn. That's what we do. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is one other, one other hat um, that I've done a ton of. It's it's just a fun little hat. Um, I don't know if you can see the beads. My, in our yeah, hand. my daughter my daughter loved them. I've done hand spun ones. This one's a, uh, a silk blend, um, merino ones, hand dyed yarn, solids. It's just so fun to do and it's really quick. It's a nice little twist pattern and then uh, with the beads in it. Right? Now do you bead them all? Or do you knit, knit it sometimes without the beads? I've never knit one without the beads. Okay. It's just, just curious. It's just a fun little knit and again, I've done so many of them. In fact, I just gave um, I just gave a friend of mine a couple to wear as uh, as chemo caps, and she's like really enjoyed them and gotten all kinds of cool compliments. Oh, so, that's good. That is nice. That's good. So everything we've looked at is natural fiber. So so just to prove that I'm not. You know, and he doesn't just do fine work. No, you just see. prove that I'm not the fiber snob. Um, this is one hat I did, and it's kind of a novelty yarn. You absolutely can't see it here, but there's tiny little thread of... Uh, it's like a reflective thread. Reflective thread. So when you take a picture of it with a flash camera, you see all the stripes in it, and it's wonderful. I have I made one for, for me and the kids, and um, it was my, my iPhone background for years. <laughs> but... Uh, but sometimes, you know, sometimes projects work better in a um, in a non-natural yarn. I think if I was doing baby stuff, sometimes I'll still use um, an acrylic. But it, it's not my favorite. But every once in a while, something just jumps out at you and says, "Knit me, knit me." And it blaze orange reflective yarn was one of those <laughs> things. Yeah, that's it. That's awesome. 
I mean, here's so two more, two more sock yarn projects. Um, That's cute. Another little beanie. Yeah. This is just two colors of sock yarn. Um, not a whole bunch. Not a whole bunch to that pattern. Let's see. Just it floats are so consistent. Yeah. yeah Work hard on that. But uh, that's a this is another hat that's gotten worn a lot. This one's probably only about seven eight years old. Okay. But it it gets it gets a lot of wear. And then this one again it's sock yarn, but uh, I do remember all the, the birds on the wire. I do remember the name of this one. It's passerine. Ah. The pattern, yes. And uh, yeah, so you can see all the. That's all awesome. The ravens. But it, and it, I don't know if it's showing up, but this is a pale gray, almost a midnight blue. Oh the, yeah, it is. The blue yeah, it? it's much more blue than black. Yeah. But that was a, that was a fun pattern. It gives it a depth that I wouldn't have expected. It does, and it and it kind of reminds me of a raven, you know, with the blue black mm -hmm. or the black blue. Yeah. That's it. So your yarn can be very specific to your vision. It can, yeah. it can. So, I, I there's a, a pattern out there called a hotel for bees, and I had this vision for exactly what I wanted. You know, I was thinking, you know, this golden, almost burnt honey, and a weathered white, you know, off white, of a commercial beehive. Oh, okay. And then a golden yellow of the bees. And you know, I sat on that pattern for a couple of years, and then, you know, boom! I walked into a booth at I want to say it was the last Houston Fiber Fest, okay. and those colors, all three of those colors, were there. And I was like, "All right, now I'm making a hotel for bees." <laughs> and of course, I didn't bring that because it's a gift, and it hasn't. The recipient hasn't seen it yet, so, <laughs> so it's at the house. That makes sense. We don't want to divulge anything before it's time. <laughs> I'm big about honoring that stuff. Um, so, since you've knit in so many different places and for so long, have you seen in the last few years um, a increase in the number of guys that knit? Have you met a lot of other knitters uh, besides our groups? Um, you know, not really. And and. Honestly, the the community that we're in, the knitting community as a whole, is not always a hundred percent receptive to male knitters. Um, nope. You know, I've I've built relationships with. That's why it's called our, man versus yeah, knitting. <laughs> with all of our local shops, so you know these folks know me, they recognize me, they know that I'm a customer. Um, well, like I went to. DFW to the Dallas Fiber Festival um, with my girlfriend who was wearing a wonderful hand-knit shawl all weekend long and every booth we went into unless they had you know a previous experience with me we're like oh what are you looking for talking to my girlfriend and she's and like she doesn't Shh, knit I don't even knit right? <laughs> you know and you would think that you know when I see somebody walk in our I haven't worked retail in a hundred years, but when I did, everybody that walks through the door is a potential customer. Right. You know, everybody that walks well, they through the door you should consider is a that. potential nickel, right? Yeah. I mean, that's commission walking in the door. Um, and if I was a self-run business, I think I would approach everybody as a customer, male, female, whatever. But I, I don't see that from from new shops. I never had, I've never had any be anybody just be outright rude to me I just like but the assumptions is going in yeah that's only happened to me once where they were rude but I was in a different country so <laughs> I felt like it could have been a language thing too like you know but uh yeah no it's 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 tough it's really tough um, to walk into a yarn shop and the first and they don't ask you you know what are you looking for or it's like, can we help you? Or who are you shopping for? Yeah, who are you shopping for? And it's like, <laughs> wait, no, I, I'm here to buy something potentially. 
and it just really kind of turns you off. Well, that, and, and you know, but that's why we buy a lot of yarn online well, because we don't have to deal with that. Buy a lot of yarn online, but I, you know, when I go, I absolutely love going to my local yarn shops, and for me, local means any place that I can drive to in like two hours. <laughs> Well, we don't have a lot of yarn shops in Houston, so that's that's an accurate statement. Well, you know, and the sad thing is, at one time we had 21 active open yarn shops mm -hmm. in the Houston area, and that was probably around 2004, 2005, yeah. when we first met, and and that was uh, it was that like, was like it was a the heyday. heyday of yarn in the Houston area. And, and each shop carried something a little different, a little and bit you different, knew. Yes. If you wanted this project, you'd go to that shop. And if you wanted this project, you'd go to that shop. And we don't have that flexibility as much as we used to um, in this area. We do still have some good local shops. Yeah. And But even just recently, we lost one that that I thought was extremely well curated. Yeah. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss that. So. Yes. And um, one of the newer ones that have come up, um, you're going to meet one of their owners recently. Uh, very recently um, so I, I met them recently and you're going to meet them very soon um, so that's kind of exciting um, it's a new yarn shop in the area I know I haven't met them but I've been following them on Instagram yeah and um, both of them right and I'll leave it at that and let you, you kind know, of excited you spill the beans later yeah but yeah it is I'm ready to make the trip up there. I almost did the other day, but had other commitments. So I had gone almost to their spot, but I had commitments back in town, so I had to turn around. Gotcha. Well, call me and let me know. I'll go with you. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> I wouldn't mind going back. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, well, this has been really a great time. Well, good deal. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Um, I would really love to see other men knit you know so one thing you got to focus on is is that you know I don't think men realize you know how much craft there is in this I mean I don't mean like crafty like right you know crayons and paper I mean crafty like you're building something I mean you, like you go back to the sweater where you know it's it's not just something you can wear. When we say construction, it's, it's architectural. Real architectural right? construction. I mean, it's it's math and engineering and architecture, and it, it's it's just wonderful. It yeah. uses your brain. So when I'm old, um, I'll still be able to answer questions even if I can't hear people, and all those non knitters will be like. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, yeah. For yeah. years, I swore I was horrible at math. I just knew I was horrible at math. I didn't like math. I didn't, and so um, no. If you can knit, you get it. I ended you up going back to school <laughs> and taking prelim classes. And uh, someone who's really important in my life was like, "I've watched you calculate decreases <laughs> on the fly <laughs> over three different feet." And then from going bigger to smaller, and you did it all in your head. And if you can calculate that, you can do algebra. <laughs> well, yeah. So right now I'm knitting a, a, a sweater that it's an all over cabled cardigan. Oh, yeah. So that's I'm be nice. remembering my cables. Um, and I didn't bring it over here, it's off camera. So I'm remembering my cables, watching the pattern, and then increasing two stitches every ninth round. And, you know, I can pretty much do that in my head. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah. That, and in time, and I didn't start off that way. I mean, everybody starts very it's, simply. It's, 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 it's 9, yeah. 18, 27. Kind of like 36. the, um, like you said, Four everybody can knit a tube. <laughs> you know, and that's when, when we get to knitting clinic and we talk about that, that's what we're going to essentially be doing is just knitting a tube. And the thing is, is you can use this for thing. anything. This can be the neck, the cowl that I had. You know, you can fold it and, you know, fold it in half and it can be a headband. You can just put it on your head like a hat. 
Have, have, you can put your ar- your hands in the, on both ends, and it's a That's hand right. warmer. That's right. And just throw it in your pocket, sitting there watching football. Yeah. Friday night lights. Ding, ding, ding. There you go. <laughs> yeah, at the um, college uh, football games, when we go, I always take my knitting, but I've learned that if I take the colors of the university and I knit in those colors, I've made so many new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Can you make me one? I'd love to have one of those. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. You know, you can take a awkward knitting in public experience and make it fun. You know, I have never, never had an awkward knitting in yeah, public I don't care. experience. I, I never have. I knit anywhere. I mean, you know, again, like I said, I work, you know, I work, I work in the oil and gas industry. I've knit on a construction site. <laughs> <coughs> knit in the office with you know with mostly guys and you know nobody's ever nobody's ever messed with me about it right and it's not something i mean a lot of times folks show interest that show interest and a lot of people will tell me <laughs> i can't do that well yeah you can anybody can that's right you know you just gotta make the decision to do it so um i hope that some of this inspiration um inspires you to do it as well um, and so one day uh, you'll come back and we'll meet uh, Eric again. But uh, for right now, I just want to say thank you. All right. Thank you. And we'll Enjoy. see you again very soon. That's right. And uh, we'll go on to the next section. So what did you think of Eric? Great guy, huh? Super talented. Um, he knits really fast, too, which is why he can produce all those sweaters. <laughs> um, but uh, we've been... Uh, in each other's lives for many years now because he was part of the um, men's knitting group, as I said, uh, that we started first in Houston 15, 17 years ago. Um, and he's now in the current uh, iteration of that, the Fiber Men. And um, we meet um, at the IKEA here um, on the second and fourth Monday of every month. And Eric is one of the founding members of that group as well. So. Uh, I really am hoping that you got some inspiration from his story, um, just seeing a little bit about what he does and uh, might inspire you to pick up some needles and um, and get to knitting yourself. Our next section is website. 